Jackie Robinson. Introduction. African Americans play a big part in professional sports today. For many years, however, black athletes weren't allowed to play with white athletes. When African American Jackie Robinson changed all that, his courage made him a baseball hero and a champion for equal rights. The early years, Jack Roosevelt Robinson was born into a poor. Georgia family in 1919. In college, he was a star on his school's football, track, basketball, and baseball teams. His family had little money. However, he left college in 1941 to help support his family and did not finish school, taking a stand. In December 1941, the United States. Entered a war like many young men at the time, Robinson was called up to serve in the U.S. Army. One day, he and a group of soldiers got on an army bus, but the bus was segregated. One soldier sat in the front, and the black soldier back in the back. Yet Robinson knew he was as good a soldier as the white man. He would not move to the back. Robinson was arrested, but many people defended him. He was a good soldier who had only stood up for what was right. In the end, he was found not guilty. You are hired. After his time. In the army, Robinson Robinson played baseball in 1945. However, baseball was segregated too. White and black athletes played in separated leagues. Robinson felt that baseball leagues should not be separated based on race. So did the branch Rick Ricky, the man who ran the Brooklyn Dodgers. Ricky wanted the Dodgers to the first white team to include a black players. Ricky knew that this player would not only have to be a great athlete, he would also have to face abuse because of his race. Ricky hired Robinson. He had one condition, though. Robinson could not respond to any of the abuse. Instead, Robinson would fight prejudice, prejudice, prejudice by playing great baseball. Number forty-two takes the field. Jackie Robinson began by playing for the Dodgers minor league team. On the road, he could not stay in the same hotels as the rest of the team. Other minor league teams would not play because of Robinson. Pitchers on other teams threw the ball at him. Even some of the men on his own team didn't want to play with him. None of this. Bill stopped Robinson. He played well enough to move up the Dodgers the next year, wearing number forty-two. He took the field on April fifty, nineteen seven, nineteen seven, nineteen forty-seven, before a crowd of seventy-six thousand people. The, st- the stands were full. Were Robinson picked up his baseball bat. The crowd watched as he walked to the plate. In South Ring, ran out from the other teams. Dug out. The words hurt, but Robinson did not respond. He let his bat to do do the talking. The Dodgers earned a victory that day, not alone over Boston, but also over 
prejudice. Prejudice. Robinson forced the many people who thought less of American, African American, to think again. Robinson wanted to, on to have a great career. In 1949, he was voted most valuable. Valuable player in the league. He was the first runner who led the league in stolen place bases. In 1962, Robinson became the first African American to get into the Baseball Hall of Fame. Beyond baseball, after Robinson. Robinson stopped playing baseball in 1957. He went into business. He became the first black vice president of a U.S. national company. He also became a civil rights leader. He continued to work for equal rights for all people until his death in 1972. Today, in the United States, more people of color play in the world. Of support sports than ever before, we all have number forty-two to thank for that.